here today with uh, Professor Giovanni Dossi, who's a professor of economics at the Santana School of Advanced Studies in Pisa. And he's also a grantee of ours um, for a very interesting grant that is called Evolutionary Paths Toward the Financial Abyss um, and the Endogenous Speed of Financial Shocks into the Real Economy. It's a long title. Um, Giovanni, welcome. So Thank I want to ask you. you about that title. Um, the two words that caught my attention, um, the first one is evolutionary. Is this Darwinian or what, what's evolutionary about this uh, path toward the financial ab ab abyss? Well, it's evolutionary by and large, both in finance and uh, in the real economy, means uh, uh, an endogenous process by which uh, different heterogeneous agents adapt to something. So there's some selection going on here, survival of the fittest, something? In a very loose sense, uh, there is survival of the fittest, but the criteria of fitness might be, in fact, uh, the proneness to go to the abyss. Mm. So there is no normative value judgment in fitness. In the, in the financial market, you might get, and indeed, you get rewarded in terms of differential wealth that you accumulate. Mm -hmm. But the process by which you accumulate this wealth might lead the whole, the whole system toward the disaster. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have models of that kind. So when you say heter heterogeneity, different people have different investment strategies, and some of them are more successful than others, and they're selected based yeah. on that in their, their, their actual historical experience as you're running this. In fact, to, to make a sort of a fortiori proof, uh, we want to keep uh, the assumption of the agent as near the orthodoxy as possible. So the agents are different in terms of essential risk aversion Oh, uh, in their portfolios. Mm -hmm. But by keeping, uh, uh, climbing up one more riskier equilibrium than another, they get to the point where the system gets very, very fragile and it cracks. Now you say in the proposal that this has something to do also with derivatives, that you're trying to see in what way the introduction of derivatives might destabilize the system. And that's because derivatives are ways of taking high risk? Well, Is yeah. that the way it works? Basically, yeah. yes. I mean, uh, if you introduce derivatives, uh, you allow people to take more risk. And so they climb up faster toward uh -huh. the disaster. Uh -huh. Not only, but the climbing up toward the disaster that is toward riskier and riskier equilibria, transform idiosyncratic risk in systemic risk, and is endo an endogenous transformation. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask you about this endogenous word. That was the second word in the title. Endogenous spread of financial <coughs> shocks. Um, so endogenous means what here? No, it means that it comes from the behavior of the actors. I tend to dislike uh, the notion of shock. I know that there is a good use in econometrics, but uh, uh, it gives the, to the reader immediately the idea that there's something coming from Mars. Mm -hmm. Most of the interesting phenomena in economics are endogenously produced. So yes, you can statistically represent them as, as a shock, mm -hmm. but they are, are generated from within. Mm -hmm. And this is what you, what you want to account for. Now, you mentioned also that this, that this grant sort of was a follow-up to a conference that INET held in, in Budapest where it was trying to get together a number of people who had different approaches to macroeconomics, that macroeconomics <coughs> was seen to be in crisis because of its inability to explain the global financial crisis, and your approach was one of them. But th so th is this, this is how this came to be? T tell me how this thing grew out of Budapest. Well, it was um, grew out of a subset of Budapest. Budapest were larger, was uh, uh, part of a grand ambition that is still there, uh, let us uh, coalesce and build uh, a sort of community to refound macroeconomics, mm -hmm. no less than that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I mean, w another important part of that is uh, agent-based evolutionary model of macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. I see. That's a part of your grant too. Yeah. You have a third piece that's, yeah. that's agent-based. And so that is, well, is that different from this heterogeneous? Or? Well, heterogeneity is, is common to every level of analysis. To leave out heterogeneity is like uh, leaving out friction in biology. I mean, uh, and the representative agent is the monument to the lack of uh, heterogeneity. Uh, 
Detergenity relates to all their behavioral rules to pricing behavior, investment behavior, technological capabilities. And then you try to see uh, what are the, outcome, the outcomes of their, of their interaction that you don't confine to equilibrium interaction. Could it be that there are orderly properties that come out uh, by that very interaction? Mm -hmm. And do the, this property correspond to, the, for, for example, the time series that you observe in macrostatistics? Mm -hmm. The answer is tentatively yes. And I think this is also an important check of robustness. It is easy to build any silly model explaining one phenomenon by one. Mm -hmm. I think a good uh, test, uh, well beyond prediction, well beyond, is, is this model able to explain these 12 empirical regularities mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I tell you, our models on uh, our agent-based model are able to, to account, that is to produce, generate a series of statistical property, macro statistical property, and together a very reasonable micro, mm -hmm. which is something that uh, light is away, for example, from Dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models. Yes, which are no notorious. Which are notorious for Yes. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, um, when I hear about this research, um, it's very ambitious, clearly, and it has a lot of dimensions to it, and how you came to the position in your life where you're able to manage a project with that many, many moving parts. Um, so I'm noticing that you started um, as a Keynesian, I suppose, your, your undergraduate uh, well, the laurea uh, at, in Italy um, was on the Keynes general uh, theory. In fact, it was moral philosophy, the chair at which I got my degree, but it was on Keynes. So it was, I was already moving towards economics. Why economics? Because at the time, I must confess, uh, uh, I wanted to learn economics in order to change the world. That seems a good reason. Yeah. This is 1976, I yeah. guess, when you, when you wrote that. Um, and, um, and is this because, so you, but you probably you went into philosophy because you were trying to figure the nature of the world the or... The big nature of the world. Yes. But then uh, you realize that at least in these times, uh, you need to slice it up a little bit. And a okay. good place to start a slicing is uh, economics because this is uh, an important part of human activity. So that was 30 years ago, Giovanni. Yes. Um, how's this worked out? Have you, have you changed the world? No. Yeah. I've not changed the world. I've witnessed uh, one of the most dramatic uh, right-wing turns in the world, indeed, uh, and in the theory also. And uh, this is saddening. And um, uh, in fact, I feel uh, the lack of uh, venues where to express uh, also political views, normative views that. Uh, also derived from our work. So the, no the normative dimension, I suppose this, I can see maybe this comes from your philosophical interests in the first place, uh, that this work is for something. It's not just to describe statistical regularities, but to give some uh, advice to policymakers or, or what? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, take uh, <coughs> the, the agent-based work that uh, I was mentioning before, and you can have many coordination quasi-equilibria, as, uh, as Paul Krugman calls them, many possibly characterized by high unemployment. And this you don't want. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see immediately the, uh, also the normative implication. And if you want to, to, uh, to, to, to say it in a nutshell, uh, I would like to advocate a uh, heavy, uh, redistributive, uh, innovation-friendly Keynesianism. Hmm. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a big package. Um, I wish we had more time. I could hear more about that. But uh, this is a, this is a, a good start. Um, we'll have to have you back for another conversation. But meanwhile, it's uh, really my pleasure to welcome you to the stable of INET economists, and we look forward to hearing the results of your, of your research. Thank you very much. Flattered and certainly I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>